Are you a cookie monster? Come on. If you were on death row and you were going to die anyway, would you just quietly kill yourself on an overdose of white chocolate macadamia nut cookies? Hey, we're close. You can tell. I know what it feels like to be totally out of control around cookies. If you have them in the house, they can just burn a hole in your mind till you finally have them all safe and sound in your tummy. Hey, if you're relating to this, what are you doing with cookies in the house in the first place? Don't bring your danger foods into the house. You're just asking for trouble. If you must have a cookie, buy one. Not a whole box or packet. And when you eat it, go sit down somewhere quietly and savor every morsel because one is the magic number. That's it. You can eat one cookie now and then, but not one dozen. You are now in a permanent program of portion control and any restrictions you may feel are for the good of your health. Let's face it. You never felt that great after eating a box of cookies, did you? During, yes, but afterwards you always realize it just wasn't worth it. Nothing changed except your waistline and your self-esteem. Your waistline went up and your self-esteem went down. What a miserable seesaw that was. But you can have a cookie now and then if you could spare the cards, because the cookie I mentioned, the macadamia nut and the white chocolate, well, one of these is going to cost you one bread card three fat cards, and two fruit cards. It might look fairly small and innocent, but it's not. It's a big caloric expense for a poor nutritional return. So what could you have for these same cards that would give you more nutrition and better quality food value? Well, how about this? A half of a raisin bagel with two tablespoons of light cream cheese. Now that uses one bread card and one fat card. You still have two fat cards and two fruit cards to go. How about a lettuce salad with orange segments, six walnuts, and two tablespoons of locale dressing? That will use up the other two fat cards and a fruit card. But wait, you still have one fruit card to spend. So how about three quarters of a cup of delicious blueberries to finish off with? Just look at all this food. Now, Take a look at the food cookie. The price is the same in terms of the cards, but it's obvious which has the better value. So what is it going to be? A few brief minutes of cookie bliss or a more sensible long term approach? Well, sometimes it will be the sensible approach, and I know sometimes it's going to be that cookie. All I ask is that you honestly get out and get the
season on TV, too. Hey, I'll be there, and I'll bring my work with me. Hey, buddy, I need a lift. Evening always gives you a lift. Now that's what I call a good tip. We're celebrating the start of our fourth big year in Pittsburgh. I watched the other three. Terrific. Three winning seasons. I'm going, Mike. How about you? Oh, yeah, let's go, Bill. This evening for anything, Dave. household records such as uh, what I have in the freezer and people's telephone numbers and addresses. Um, I use it as a word processor for my letters which always come out perfect now and um, the most exciting thing I, I find is um, the mailbox uh, where I write to other people on the Festel system. 
And who have you written to recently? Have you got any examples? Um, yes. Um, I sent a message to my doctor asking for a repeat prescription. And um, he sent, he's left the prescription for me in the chemist. Right. Well, thank you very much, Pat and Julian. We'll be seeing you later in the programme. Bye, Bye, Jane. Jane. If, if you have anything you want to say to us here on Database and you're connected to the Prestel service, you can use the Database mailbox. Pat Green is still with us in North London and she's going to demonstrate this facility by sending us a message. Hello, Pat. Hello, Jane. Checking in can take its toll. Check out fast and nice and cold. Where on earth will they show up next? If you're not having fun, they'll find you. Waiting for your chance to scream. Fat that helps you beat the sea. You could be next. Don't you wanna? So, Sarah, what's going on here? Sarah? Sarah? She won't answer you. Or she can't. Why not? This is the way it's been since she started smoking pot. She's all lazy and boring and... You know, we used to have so much fun together. And now? This is what we do. What's squishy, stretchy, and transforms almost anything? Ah! Foam is fun you can feel. Roll it, mold it, or cover it. That's the way you foam it. Look, now you can turn anything into a fabulous foam creation. Transform this wooden fossil into a fierce foam T-Rex. Turn this ordinary toy car into a foaming fast dragster. Or change this plain dollhouse into a foamtastic mansion. Foam sticks to almost anything. And when you're done, squish it back and start all over or let it harden and keep it forever. Look, clay is messy and hard to start, but foam turns fun into a work of art. Check it out. Tiny foam microbeads magically stick together and form to any shape you want. Now craft fancy foam to wear. Model creepy foam critters or build an erupting volcano of foam. Plus, mix and match colors for any design you can imagine. Create a stylish jewelry case or a funky foam base. Foam your pencils so they're cool, or show some spirit at school. Make costume masks, even foam rainbow glass. Take foam outside and the fun will go on. Foam your bike, a scooter, Anymore. a skateboard, your shoes. With foam in your hands, the fun Riding never stops. Just internet, anyone who foams, from parents to time. Free. Foam, Hello it's fun you can reality. Interactive appetite, searching for a website, a window to the world, got to get online. Take a spin, now you're in with the techno set. You're going surfing on the internet. Hey there, it's us again. This is my brother Peter, mom and dad, and I'm Dash. Today, we're going to be showing our friends, Andrew and Lisa, the basics of the internet. And we thought you might want to come along. It'll be cool. Now, here's a little background. When we installed internet access on our computer, I got the whole family involved. It's true. Everybody had their own tasks to do. It was a lot of work, but it was really worth it. Mm. Now that I've gotten on the internet, I'd rather be on my computer than doing just about anything. It's really cool. The internet gave us a whole world of exciting new possibilities. So I guess this is a story of how it changed our lives. Maybe it will yours too, with the kid's guide to the internet. Take a spin, now you're in with the techno set. You're going surfing on the internet. As Rich told you, we installed the internet on our computer just a short time ago. And I haven't been able to get the kids off it ever since. Not only do they play the typical computer games that all the kids enjoy, but their curiosity for learning has skyrocketed. Peter is constantly quoting sports statistics, and he can tell you the best surfing spots around the globe. <laughs> Not to mention the improvement in Peter's grades, and Dasha's too. Having the internet in our home has had a great impact on our lives. Rich keeps up with the stock market and our investments, and I'm able to pay the bills in half the time it used to take me. And the kids are improving in their grades and communication skills. Which makes me happy, as I would sure like them to go to college someday. Don't worry, though. It's still cool. The program is by kids for kids, and it's not just for boys either. You'll learn how the net can entertain you and take you to far off locations and meet new people. And at the end of the tape, I'll be back to tell you how to safeguard your computer so that you can reduce your concerns about the kinds of websites your children can visit. You never can be too careful. And to help out if requested, though I doubt she'll be asked. <laughs> so let's get underway. Yeah. Take a spin, now you're in with the techno set. You're going surfing on the internet. So, what's everyone up to today? Oh, 
Linda Emerson called and she asked if Dasha and Peter could help Andrew and Lisa learn about the internet. She's trying to get Bud to get the internet at home. Okay, now don't forget to keep it simple for your pals, you two. You guys have learned an awful lot, even though you've only been online a couple of weeks. That's the great part, Dad. It's so easy to learn and so much fun to play on. Yeah, Dad. Peter doesn't even have to help me anymore. I did my report on the Mississippi River all by myself. Hey, you know how to spell Mississippi with one I? M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-I. <laughs> You know, I've been able to read some of my favorite cooking magazines online. I've even gotten some great gardening tips, too. No wonder you guys are always so busy on the computer. You're going surfing on the internet. Come on in. Hi, guys. Dad's just leaving, and Mom said we can have the computer all to ourselves. Hey, Andrew, what's up? <laughs> Hi, Mr. and Mrs. Jameson. My mom wanted me to ask you guys to call her. She wants you to tell her more about the internet and why you like it. Yeah, and you've got to tell her that we really need it for our homework. But don't tell her about the games and stuff. Even though we know that's what you really want it for. I'll tell you what, I'll call her. Now, you make sure Dasha and Peter show you how they've done some of their school reports and not all that cybernet stuff, okay? See you later, kids. I'll be Bye. home early. Bye. Bye. Take a spin, now you're in with the techno set. You're going surfing on the internet. Okay guys, the first thing that you need to know is that the internet is amazing and it's changing every day. Once you've learned how to get online yourselves, you'll start seeing web pages everywhere. TV shows have them, schools, Disney World, even the White House. What's a web page? Something ducks walk on? Ha ha, very funny. No, it's the name of the different sites you can look up on the internet. Hold on sis, let's start at the beginning like Dad did with us. So Andrew and Lisa will be able to persuade their parents about the internet with some important facts. Good idea, Peter, but where do we start? Let's start with the basics first. There are three important services you can access on the internet. Surfing the World Wide Web. Surfing? That sounds pretty cool already. And we're done in a rock. Go on, Peter. Then there are news groups to share information with people. And then there's email. Email? I heard that's really neat. My cousin has a pen pal in Sweden and they write back and forth and it transmits right away and doesn't cost anything. Yeah, you can even talk with people all over the world on chat lines. Don't they have chess games and stuff like that too? Yup, they got more stuff than you can imagine. So, where should we start? Let's start with web pages. So first you need to know that everything on the internet has an address. And all web addresses start with HTTP colon double backslash. Then to access the World Wide Web, of the Smithsonian Museum a few weeks ago. I also had to do a homework assignment about the Wright Brothers for a history assignment. Can you show us what you found? Sure. remote regions of the world. Now that's amazing. So where else can we go? Want to write a letter to President Clinton? Would he answer us? I bet he would. Let's tell him how much we love the internet and that he should try to get more computers for our schools. But how do we even look up the White House? You type www.whitehouse.gov.
tie the whole thing together with a platform and put the sleeping quarters up above. With the crops raised. There's a little bit of a swamp back there, we'll have to drink that. Put the plant over there and pump up river water for the fish. We can do it ourselves. Slash and the whole area. Yeah. We've got four or five acres of good growth. We've got a good screen installation. We've got some work. They make it simple and they even have a helpline for good stuff. What was the attraction for you in the role of Ali Fox because to some extent he's unsympathetic and he's a loser and these aren't necessary qualities normally attract Hollywood I beg to differ. I don't think he's a loser at all. I think he's a, sure there are very many attractive aspects to his character. He's a man of enormous intelligence, energy, he has a very strong moral point of view. Uh, there's a lot to commend him. As well, there's these other complications the to his character. He's a pain in the ass. He's a, he's a Make sure you get them fixed first. He's a, he's Otherwise, difficult. if you're having he's, problems he's, uh, when you're installing your internet disk, you won't know where uh, they're coming from. But, but that's so what's interesting. So we install the disk and we can go online immediately. Does your computer have a modem? You should have gone out of your way I to make so. him unglamorous. I think so. My grandpa bought it for us. It has all the latest high tech stuff. It sounds like it should be pretty easy for you then. But you might get your folks to help just to make sure everything's working okay. Yeah, because I remember when Dad installed ours, he backed up all of our computer data. So uh, the glasses are uh, too small for my face. Uh, the shirt that I wore, we cut off the bottom of it so as to change the proportions of my body and make me look more ungainly, less odd. Some of the, the lack of control that he later exhibits in his, in his uh, uh, mental equipment wanted to suggest his physical the biggest problem of the 20th century is sun. There was a, a lot of construction work going on within the film. And I know you're a carpenter, Hollywood's most famous carpenter. Was that an attraction to you? I can't tell you how anxious I am for another carpenter to come out of Hollywood. So, <laughs> <laughs> so this will all be over. Um, no, I mean, it's coincidental that People are already talking quite rapidly, I think, about a probable Oscar nomination for you. How do you feel about that? My stock answer is that I'd be flattered by the company, since I don't know what the company would be. I can only assume that I'd be flattered by the company. I was last time. I don't believe, I'm not competitive with the followers. I don't think there's any way to judge what they've done in different views. His defiance builds, so does his anger. And when he starts misusing his naughty chair, Super Nanny takes action. Put the chair away. He can't obviously use the chair, can he? Because he keeps throwing it. Place him on the floor. You're doing really good. You're staying focused, you're staying strong. He's angry. You stay calm yeah. and you teach him. He has to learn to respect you.
As Natalie struggles to keep control, Super Nanny encourages Martin to show a united front. Increasingly abusive.
When did your insurance lapse? What month? A year. Um, I believe. I I'm believe correct. it's very easy to verify. What month and year did your insurance lapse? December 2011. And when was this accident? January 17, 2012. What time? Roughly 5. That's not correct. What time? Around 6.30. against their better judgment or not, the ambulance released you. Yes. And what did you do when the ambulance released you? Waited for the police. In they met far. Miss Duncan, I'm oh. going to give you an opportunity to tell your side of the story. Don't interrupt her again. I apologize. Police arrived. Police never arrived. Never. Never. So what did you do? Miss Duncan offered to take me to the hospital. And did you agree? Yes. So Miss Duncan took you to the hospital. Yes. Do you have a report from them? And that you said to her that you promised to send me your bills and we would work it out. We had discussed, I wanted to discuss it with her before I paid her anything because the paramedics even said, this is why we call this an accident. It didn't look like an accident. I don't think you did it on purpose. Yeah. I don't think you did it on purpose. You were negligent. You didn't stop long enough to stop sign. I was stopped long. <laughs> there was a lot of traffic. You know what? There was a lot of traffic on night. You're supposed to stop long enough to make sure it's clear. Well, pedestrian somebody like that on the bike. You yeah. didn't do that. And not only did you do it, but you had no insurance, which would have taken care of all of the medical bills, and we would not be here today. No, exactly. I understand that, but I, um, when I get my chance to talk, I'll... Now's your chance. Okay. Now's your chance. Now I've seen the photographs of the car. I've seen you 
text message, we've seen her medical bills, we've seen her injuries, and now is her chance to talk. I exited the freeway and I stopped. And I was there long enough for at least four to five trucks and cars to go past. I'm a trained driver. I've been doing this a long time. And I know that being in tune with my surroundings and wait, have my proper eye read time. Just tell me what happened, please, on the 17th, not put your history in there. I sat there and I waited for traffic to go by. I looked to the right, I looked to the left, I looked back and forth because I know the best units are on that sidewalk. And I never saw her. But you know, I mean, she wasn't a fan of the several seconds and I didn't know to move her what to do because I didn't know her injuries I wanted to make sure she was okay and then two gentlemen stopped they called 911 because my phone was I did my thing we passed we passed down I was concerned about her we passed down anything that I'm interested in I think Miss Duncan it was very nice of you to offer to take her to the hospital I think that that was well I did take her to the hospital Yes, I know. So I think it was very nice of you to offer to take her to the hospital. She was injured as a result of you. Whatever it is, having an accident, something that you didn't plan on, but she was injured and you had a stop sign. And, and I was stopped. You weren't stopped long enough. You're supposed to stop for as long as it takes. Nowhere in any book does it say you're supposed to stop for three seconds or four seconds or five seconds. It say you're supposed to stop until it's 100% safe. clothing on. 100% incorrect. I was wearing all gray. I've never come in contact with anything while in my vehicle, and it's not a good feeling. My back is totally messed up. That's so horrible. It was, it's a scary thing. I used to be an athlete, and now I'm terrified of bicycles. And then to see her sitting on the sidewalk, it was, it was horrible. Don't trust drivers and wear neon. I don't know. <laughs> 
And now, the next case. All parties to the matter of Gardenhire versus Valdez. Step forward. Teresa Gardenhire is suing dog adoption mannequin Sebastian Valdez for unpaid fees to foster a dog. Is this your daughter? It is. How old is she? 14. She's going to wait outside. Okay? Sure. Mr. Valdez, you are, according to what I've read, the operations manager of uh, an adoption agency for dogs. Correct. Uh, these animals that you get from shelters? Uh, from local uh, uh, city and county shelters, yes. And it's your mission to find them homes? Correct. One of the things that you do in that mission is to allow people to foster dogs, people who are not sure whether they want to permanently keep the dog, but if they foster a dog, you will pay them a certain amount of money. And how much money do you pay them? Uh, it's a $50 uh, per week. Fee for foster. Fee for foster. That's correct. And how much is the fee if you have a person who wants to adopt a dog from your shelter? Uh, the adoption fee is uh, $350, and, uh, which includes the uh, microchip, uh, spay or neuter, and uh, all up-to-date shots. Now, Miss Gardenshire, you became a foster parent for a dog with Chihuahua mix. Is that right? That is correct. On what date? September 18, 2011. Did you have a dog at home? I did not. Were you looking to have a dog as part of your family? Not at that time. I just thought you might foster a dog for $50 a week. It was more about the idea to rescue, to save the dog's life for me. And you took the dog in on September 18th? That is correct. How long did you have the dog before you received a telephone call from Mr. Valdez or his organization with regard to your desire to keep her? Is it a female dog? It is. To keep her? Is it a month? A month and a half? So let's say six weeks. And you spoke to her? Actually, the previous operations manager, uh, Mrs. Hahn. That would be useful. Was at that point. Tell me your last name. Hahn. Judge Judy continues. No. Did you have the dog today? Yes, she's here with me now. Did you sign the adoption? I did not. Ever? No. Great. You don't want the dog back, do you? Teresa Gordon says dog adoption manager Sebastian Valdez proposed for unpaid fostering fees. Sebastian claims Teresa is running a scam. Okay, Ms. Hahn, do you remember speaking to Ms. Gardenshire? Yes, uh, we had a volunteer that met the dog at adoption to express interest in fostering her. So I let Teresa know that and asked if she wanted to adopt her herself. Our fosters always have the option to adopt a dog. So you said you had someone else interested in her? In fostering as a volunteer, so as a nonprofit organization, that would help us by not having to pay the $200 a month. And what did Ms. Gardner try to tell you? At that point, she was not in a position to adopt herself. Why was that? Just finances weren't. Um, I had, had surgery that summer, and so was um, receiving a limited income, so I wasn't really in a position. Um, Mickey had a position to what? To provide medical care. She had some medical issues and things that I was concerned about, so I wasn't in the position to maintain that. Well, did you tell them that if they took care of her medical issues, you would be prepared to adopt her? As a matter of fact, I did. And did you take care of the medical issues? They agreed to continue to take care of that particular issue. Medical issue? That, the, the one that was ongoing, yes. Okay, so you now have the dog. That is correct. Did you or did you not pay the $350 adoption fee? I did not. They waived that for you? They did. And you want the $50 a week that they did not give you after a certain point? Correct. At what point did they stop giving you the $50 a week? October 2011. And at that point, they said either a doctor or give her back. And there were certain things you wanted. The fee waived. They agreed to waive the fee. Is that right? My concern was the adoption agreement was my concern. Explain that to me. Um, Ms. Hahn sent me the adoption agreement sometime in October, possibly even November. I told her that I had a family member who was an attorney that I wanted to have them look over the agreement because it was a little wordy and I wasn't sure that I understood it and that I would get back to her by the end of November. She said fine. Why by the end of November? Because the person that I sent it to was gone and wasn't able to. It sounds like a whole bunch of shot John. You sound like a very intelligent woman, madam. If what you think is that these people are going to give you the $50 a week while your lawyer is out of town or unavailable to look over a pet adoption agreement, that
that's not happening. They didn't, they that's, didn't. I'm telling you, that's not happening if that's what you're suing for. I'm beginning to sense something here that's more about the welfare of you than the welfare of the dog. I paid a lot of money out of my own pocket that's to take care of it. You should have given it back if you didn't want to have it. You were given an opportunity to do that after six weeks. So if you didn't want to have a dog that had medical problems, they had somebody else who was willing to foster the dog. But you took the dog. And I read the paper, so I know that they were nice enough to waive the $350 fee because you gave them a hard time. But for you to come back and say, I want, I want all the money that they should have paid me after they sent me the adoption agreement that I didn't sign, that's not happening. Your Honor, I told them that I felt like the adoption agreement was one-sided and that it would still be their dog, that it would not be my dog. Did you have the dog today? Yes, she's here with me now. Did you sign the adoption agreement? I did not. Ever? No. Great. Judge Judy continues in a moment. Uh, you don't want the dog back, do you? Uh, we would be willing to take the no, dog. They don't want to get the dog back. She likes the dog. dog. Yeah, she just wants to get paid for having the dog for as long as she can. And that's not happening, Miss Gardenshire. You're not getting that's not what it's about. It's about charity. Theirs and yours. You got a chance to look. You were getting an extra $200 a month to take care of the dog. And after, let's say, two months of having the dog in your care, you should have been able to make a decision. And if you want to look at the adoption agreement, go and look at it during the course of those first two months. But don't hang on to the dog and then expect this charity to pay you money. I told him I would give her back. I have emails to show that. I just told him I would give her back. Just her back. They're prepared to take her back now. You want to go tell your daughter to bring her in? Yes. Listen to me. You want to give her back? Sure. But but, you want to but give they her back? gave me an email that said I didn't Listen. have to sign the agreement. I said, sure, they can have her back. Said, absolutely. You're finished with her. I'm finished. Then I want to tell you something. That she's really better off not being with you. That's all. She's yours. Thank you, Step out. Judge Judy continues in a moment. And on the next Judge Judy. Did you discuss with her having a life together and starting a family? No. And you weren't there when your daughter was born? No. I've had enough of you and your procreation. Judge Judy. It's really shocking to us uh, to see this because we thought she, she was a great home. We were under the impression that we had placed the dog in a loving home, but that's clearly not the case. It's obvious that she doesn't care about the dog or her daughter's feelings towards the dog. She's had this dog since October. This came out of really nowhere for us to think that she would react like this. For it's Judge Judy. Rhonda Gardner Hunt is suing her daughter, Jackie Gardner, for missed payments and parking fines on a car she helped her buy. Order. This is case number 59 on the count of Madam Gardner Herbert versus Gardner. Thank you. You're welcome to the this morning. You may be seated, sir. Have a seat. Miss Herbert, this is your daughter. And you're suing her for some loans that you made to her. The car because she had a whole lot of parking tickets that prevented her from having a valid driver's license. Right. Your daughter said that you helped her out because she needed it. Never any discussion of paying you back for the two payments that tell you what her defense is. And that you are just annoyed at her at this point because she and her husband are reconciled. Is that it's my son's father, but yes. So it's not your husband? No, we're not paying. How long have the two of you been separated? off and on for eight years. And how old is your son? Seven. Have you been off and on with him because of issues? Yes. Any issues involve domestic violence? Mm, not really. What does that mean, not really? <sighs> he would go out and drink and party and not come home, and then we would fight over that, but it was never violent towards me. Just basically nasty drunk. Yes. How many times did that happen? Many times? Yeah. How old is he? 33. What does he do? Paints houses or canvases? Uh, no, new construction houses. Are you together now? He's currently incarcerated. He's incarcerated for selling drugs. I don't know what I would do if I were the I would certainly be pretty upset. I am. I would certainly be pretty upset. Did you ever see a skunk become a zebra? No, ma'am. Did you ever see a dog turn into a poodle? Doesn't happen. This guy's never going to become a poodle. And the longer you continue, 
cocktails to this music, the longer it's going to be before you have a chance to have a life for yourself, your son has a chance to have a reasonable role model to grow up with, and your mother could start sleeping again. Who got the parking tickets? It was me. They're not parking tickets. They are driving violations. We're driving without a driver's license. And you that got How many did you get? Four. Your mother wasn't in the car with you, was she? No. Was your son in the car? Once. Was the boyfriend in the car? No. Why were you driving without a valid driver's license? I had life. I had to go to work. Why didn't you have a valid driver's license? Because if he's incarcerated for drugs now, it's not the first time he got caught selling drugs. And it's certainly not the first time he sold them. And you don't want that around him. And if he would like to be with him, which, you know, sometimes women can't escape. Sometimes they're just addicted. And maybe you're not a nice girl either. I don't know. However, if that's the case, let your mother raise him. Let your mother raise him. Put your mother on the side. It's easy. 
Because you wonder what's going to happen. If it keeps happening, she's going to call Child Protective Services and they're going to take him away from you. Then you won't have a choice. That's what it is. It's not an unusual story. Because according to you, right before you called the IRS, your son convinced you to lend him $15,000. So you took out the $15,000 from your bank, then called the IRS and worked out this payment plan with them. Your son wanted the $15,000. Let me understand this, because he wanted to buy a house. That's what you said in your complaint, correct? And he wanted to show the bank that he had assets enough to get a mortgage. So far, correct? Well, what did you need fifteen thousand dollars for? It was for house. For house. Well, for house to buy.
Correct. And that's what you want me to get from you. Correct. That's not happening. Have I said anything that is wrong so far? I just want to know. I've relayed the story the way I've read in your complaint. I have mine a little different. Well, just tell me where I was mistaken. Well, when I when I received fifteen thousand dollars, I haven't spoken with the IRS yet. I spoke with the IRS after I gave them the money. Yes, I understand that. And I said I, I understand that you waited until you gave him the money to call the IRS. And I sent the IRS a thousand dollars. The fifteen thousand dollars actually was for him to hold until I settled everything with the IRS. And it was put in your bag, and 
wanted to see that they would trace it back. You said to your mother, I need a letter from you that this is a gift and you don't expect to be repaid. Right? I was just unaware of it. Am I correct? Yes. Don't tell me you were unaware. And that was a lie. Because your mother now says, I expect it to be repaid. Right? No. Well, you started to pay your mother back the money even though you weren't supposed to. No, so she would call from time to time and say, I need this amount for X amount of something. She didn't really say why, but she said, I'll reimburse you the money when you find a house. Uh, so you got money again. So I was lending her the money back. Goodbye, folks. Come on.